Bokatov, today's daf daf nine bab metzia zuman for achem kol beis tron sim asar v'shivya. We're in the middle of a page tani rav tachlifa about two three lines below the beginning of the last tosfos on the page. Tosfos on the last tosfos is em yachol v'natko. So right a couple lines below that is tani rav tachlifa bar marava. Rav tachlifa bar marava like us from Eretz Yisrael. Bar marava means he came from Eretz Yisrael. He made a review in the following case. Two people are holding on, grabbing on to the towel. Apparently not like our Mishnah. Our Mishnah said two people holding on to a talus. They each claim that the whole thing is there. They each swear that less that, that, that they don't have less than half that they have, and they don't have less than half, et cetera, et cetera. And they split it down the middle. Here he says, each one, if they're grabbing onto the towels, each one keeps as much as he's actually holding on to, as much as he's grasping on to. So we'll see the difference. So let's say you have a big talus here. One guy's holding, let's say, a third. Another guy's holding a quarter. So each guy, the guy's holding a third gets a third. The other guy's holding a quarter gets a quarter. And the rest, they split equally. That's what the Rav Tachlif of Merit Yisrael learned this price in front of Rabu. The Chavala Rabavo, Rabavo pointed out, indicated to him, maybe showed him, Rushvua. They still have to make a shvua, like we said before, a shvua that, you know, that it's there so to avoid people grabbing things from one another, as Rabbi Yochanan said, to make sure that they don't steal from one another. Or we had another reason, right, another reason that it brought down, basically, one said it was, like, that was Rabbi Yochanan's idea, that to make sure that people don't, don't uh, steal from one another, right? That was the basic idea that, why, because it's a shvua drop on it, certainly not a shvua the Raisa. So that was the idea that we mentioned the other day, and there was another spark gave me right now what it was. But uh, to again, it's a, it's a drabanan that you shouldn't come to steal, or uh, in case you're uh, suspected of, um, uh, you know, or or the, the other idea was that what that you're afraid that maybe he's grabbing it because he owe, he possibly owns him owes him some old loan, and he's coming to take it. So to avoid. Uh, people making a mistake, we make them make a shvua to make sure that they are legitimate, uh, that they have a legitimate claim, that they're not stopping making something up, okay, or that it's some other uh, other issue they have. Shvua, fine. El Masisim, what about our Mishnah? You just said that each one hold, each one takes as much as he actually is grasping on to, and the rest you split. Our Mishnah said you split it equally. So what do you do with our Mishnah? El Masisim, the to Pali Badari, Blok Tani Zenot, Al Makum Shira Magas. How does our Mishnah work? You say in our Mishnah they split it down the split it down the middle equally. Here you say each one takes as much as he's holding on to, and the rest that they're not holding on to, that you split. Our Mishnah is speaking about the whole Mishnah is speaking about without really holding on. Each guy's got crunching half in his hands. They're holding on to the fringes. Each one is holding on to the fringes, to the edges. It's off the ground, as we've said, because if it's we're going to talk about that in the next couple of days. If it's still if part of it's still on the ground, you haven't lifted it, you haven't really acquired it, so you have to actually lift it up. So it's off the ground, but they're holding on onto the fringes. Then you split it down the middle. But if they're actually holding more than the fringes, each one keeps whatever he's holding on to. Amar Mashash Shmami, no, you see here that high sudra, keeping the toughest bay shal shoshos. You know the way we make a Kenyan. Soon we're going to make a Kenyan with the rabbi for Pesach, right? We're going to acquire. We're going to give him the rights to our chametz. Now, how do we do that? How do we do that? Uh, we give him the rights to the chametz or the chametz, and he in turn gives us something, a pen or a handkerchief or something of that sort. That's called the Kenyan Surah. It's learned out from the story of, of, of Rus, right? The, the story of Rus and how, um, uh, you know, how he made a Kenyan to acquire rights and her, et cetera, and all the property and all that stuff. So um, that's the, um, right? So uh, it, and, and and the way we, the way that's how it's learned. It's learned from that case in Rus in, in the story of the Book of Rus. And now we we so we apply that. That's a kind of Kenyan today. So if you make a Kenyan, I sort of give them special shalosh. In the in the it, let's say the sutter is a it's a uh, I don't know a shirt or something of that sort. As soon as the person acquires a little piece of it, three by three finger breaths, very small piece. That's considered right to be plea. Karina, but we call that already Venus on the You're giving it the command the Pusik dummy. It's as if it's been cut off, severed, but cunny. Okay, so the point is that you see from over here that what? Since you say 
that uh, you could, that each person takes whatever. Midik Tani Rashi says, "Ad Malkum Shiara Magas Tani Lo." Whatever you hold on to, so you see the the suder that the Kona acquires, Shakona and Balkinian. In other words, I acquire your handkerchief and I give you my chametz or I'm giving my shoe, whatever it is. As soon as the even the tavas be makna shalosh al shalosh, one sees re, the person who wants to give. I want to give. I want to give you my chametz, right? And I acquire from you the handkerchief. As soon as I held on to a little, little piece of it, three by three, it's considered v'shalof ishnal. And that time he took off his shoe, used a shoe, a pen, whatever, whatever instrument you have, whatever clue you have. It's as if it's been cut up a konyamakna. In other words, at that point, when I took a little, little piece of the handkerchief. I automatically give over the chametz to the rabbi. But shows the that you need a kli. Rashi says, right? Because this is nalo, like your shoe, and less than three by three finger prets is not considered a beg. Is not considered a kli. Like we find by in of Tuma. So he says over here, since you see what's the source, since we just explained that each person acquires whatever ad makom shira magas lo. So the same way when it comes to the suder. You have to acquire something as a, a, to the point that you acquired. So once you get three by three, it's as if once you've taken the, even if you haven't taken the whole cloth or the shirt or whatever it is in your hands, as long as you've got a cleave, you've acquired something, that's good enough. As we see over here, that whatever you acquire in your hand by the talus, that belongs to you. You, you are acquiring it. Guys walk it before closing Right. They didn't make a kidney. Yeah, yeah, they made, they made a, they each, it each, 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 each made a king. That no, wasn't the Kenyan. no, no, the Kenyan was they picked it up off the ground, and when they picked it up, they made a Kenyan. That's the whole point. They're made, they're claiming they made a Kenyan on it. Each one says, I picked from, it up from Hefker, from Hefker, right? From Hefker, right? Right. Or if it was the case of Kamemka, that was a more complicated case where they each paid for it and they made a Kenyan on it. But either way, they each claim that they made a Kenyan on it. So he says over here, from the fact that you see they're each corner, what's in their hands. The same way, when you make a Kenyan Sudr, once you have a, a proper kli, three by three, as long as you have three by three, which is fit to be, be cut off, to be severed from the other part of the document, from the other part of the kli, the shirt or the pants or the coat, whatever it is, and still be a kli, you're at that point, you're, that's a Kenyan. So it's a good Yeah. Did you guys see this, this, this right. jacket on the floor? Mm -hmm. They come to best. What they're saying is, it's all mine. It's, it's all mine. Saying it's right. meaning. Right. When I picked it up, you weren't there. I picked it up. I made a Kenyan on the right. right. Now tomorrow we'll see that 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 each one. We also see from the Mishnah, although you don't see it directly, it's from the extra words in the Mishnah. We'll see that each one picked it up for himself and for the other one too. Not that that's the case in the Mishnah, but if that would be the case, that would work also. But in this case, they're each claiming that they picked up the whole thing. Right, but, but by picking up a fringe, by, by picking up a fringe, but lifting, it, but lifting it off the ground, they so lifted it up. What's the comparison? The no, no. Place. So if if they're holding on to more than the fringe, right. then they've acquired that part of it. Understand each one because they because they've come in together. Normally, if you just pick it up, a, a document, there's nobody else. Let's say there would be no fight. You picked it up. You're holding it by the fringe. It's yours. You sure. picked it up right. off the ground. Right. But over here, where there's a fight about it. So the question is, who owns what? We don't know. There's no way to determine it. There's no, there's no proof. There's no evidence. Nothing like that. So we say each one owns whatever he's holding on to because he made a Kenyan in that. And the rest we split, but they, but it's off the ground. And they both claim that they you picked it up. Kenyan, yeah, yeah, on the whole thing. Exactly. That's the whole point. So how do you swear? So he said, I, I claim I own the whole thing. And I'm ready to swear that I own the whole thing. But because Besson doesn't allow them each to swear that they own the whole thing, because it would be a, a, a um, it, it would, uh, it would, it would yeah, make Besson look bad. It would be a shame for Besson that the guy swore that he owns the whole thing and you're only giving him half. Besson would sort of be, be, be discredited by that. So we say, therefore, that uh, you swear that you have something, and you don't have less than half. Remember, we said, don't swear that I don't have less than half, because zero is also not less than half, right? So, so you come down with this. I own something, but it's not less than half. That's how we discussed this before. So you want to make sure if your house is often if your house is get the other machine. The other, let's say, you know, a man has to give a woman a get, and when if he's divorcing her, he has to hand it into her hand, either her or her shliach. But it has to be given over. You can't email it to him. Like it doesn't work like law, laws today. All these laws about 
money and, and marriage, etc. You know, like, can you marry a woman by giving her money, right? Money or you have to give kefs to show kefs. So how about if you bid it to her, you know, like today, or you wire it to her? How would Adam see that? You have to be in front of Adam. There's a lot of issues that come up. One of the thing is a get has to be given in her hand. Okay, let's say he gave it in her hand. Either him or his shliach gave it to her or her shliach, and he put it in her hand, but he's got a, a, a cord, a, a string attached to it. It was attached. It was in his, uh, you know, let's say it was in a big uh, a case or something, or whatever. It was in a bag, and he had a he had a string on the bag. He was he was holding on to the string. He gave it to her. If he could pull it, cut it off, and bring it to him, she's not divorced, even though the get is in her hand. So how do you say that? You just said that as soon as he makes a kenyan on it, let's say it's a shoe or a handkerchief, and as soon as he puts a little piece of the shoe, three by three handkerchief, very little, like a little patch, since it's fit to be cut off, and that would be a kli, uh, the kenyan takes take, takes place, whatever the kenyan is. In the case of the rabbi. Uh, buying your chametz, so he gives you the handkerchief or the pen or the shoe or whatever, and you give him your chametz. Uh, why is that good enough? Here you see by getting, even if she has the whole get in her hand, but a part of it's still in his hand, meaning he's got a cord, a, a string, a rope that he could pull it back to him, so she's not divorced. If he can't pull it, meaning she she has possession of the get, that if he would pull the string, the string would tear or wouldn't it wouldn't have any effect. So why why is that? There she has the get already in her hand. This is awesome. Crease is being of like There you need a total cutting off, a total severance. That's a special Allah when it comes to get. And that's some get creases be other. He's got to give her a full something that's totally cut off from him entirely. Here, Hacha Nasinabin, here you have to do is give it to him, Boika. You gave it to him. He gave you the handkerchief. Umarava, Imai said Talismus Hebes, Hulkin, Hulkin. Let's say the uh the talis. Had gold embroidering on it. So you still split it. The sheets isn't it obvious to split it. You said you split the whole thing, right? In a case where whatever you're splitting, right? Even if even if it's uh, you, you split it. So in our mission, we're talking about each holding on to the fringes and uh, there's gold on it too. You split that. Why not? Isn't it obvious? The gold is in the middle. So I'm in If it's in the middle, you cut it down the middle. It's as low as The mekav gabichat. We'll see. You don't actually have to cut it, but you split the value. The mekav is actually closer to one side. So you might say, if we're each holding the fringes and what you split it down the middle, effectively, you don't really mean necessarily you cut it. But let's say you split it down. You could cut it also if it has, if it would maintain some value. So let's The mekav It's closer to one side. Mao is saying the like polygraphy. The guy can say, listen, it's closer to my side. Let's cut the towels down the middle. And the gold, uh, a Torah, whatever is on my side. Why should we split it down this way? We can split it the other way. Right? If you split it lengthwise or whatever, then you're going to get all the gold. If we split it crosswise, it will be split down the middle. And that's what you would do. Now, this is all, all now we've been talking about. You're holding on to a garment, talus, an animal, right? And you split that down the middle. We'll see. It means, doesn't mean necessarily split it physically. It could mean that. You could split it if they both if they both agree to that, but it also could mean that you sell it and you uh, split its value. Two people on Gestein. Now we always know there's a malva and a loba, right? There's the lender, the creditor, and the borrower. Who holds the star, the IOU? In the hands of the malva, obviously, right? He has the IOU. And what you should do is when you pay when you pay it off, you should make sure that you get the star back and you rip it up then no problems will come into effect. However, they didn't always do that, right? Not everybody did that. Sometimes they gave a receipt like they do today, right? They do a receipt, then you got to hold on to the receipt, et cetera. So two people are holding on to a star. Ma'ava Mashali, but Ma'ava says it's mine, but enough of many. Now, they're both, how are they both holding on to it? Usually it's either in one hand or the other. Here again, like, you know, this weird case of Shnaim Oaks and two people are holding on to it. That's also not a common thing, right? But they're both holding on to this star. So the Malva says, it fell for me. And uh, Mitzvah and I found it, and he picked it up with, together with me. It fell on the ground. It was mine, meaning I haven't collected it yet. It was yours. It brought them. It was yours. It, it, the star is a valid star. I did borrow the money from you, but I paid you back. 
and I paid you back. And now, silly me, I should have torn it up, but I didn't. I put it in my pocket. It fell out of my pocket. You know this. We both grabbed it together. So what's the rule? Rebbe says, you must validate the star with its signatures, meaning confirm that the star is a valid star. It could be a forgery. You need first to go to get the atom, etc., and prove that it's valid. And then what? Then you can collect it. Why should you collect it? It's still possible that it fell from the lova. After he paid it off, the Malva gave him the star. He says, listen, you want to get paid, by the way, you know, you want a receipt or something, or give me back the IOU. So before he got a chance to, to rip it up, it fell down. So what do you mean? What do you mean if you validate the star? That means you, and, and the Malva will be able to collect again. The Gemara is going to say that immediately. when to ask about that. But that's what he says. Ah, uh, very good. Okay, okay, okay. So so that's that's the guy the proof. The, the whole issue over here is that we have no proof. We have well, no proof. There was, a loan. there was a loan, but maybe it was paid off. That's a, that's right. that's the lowest. We know there was a loan. We know there was a loan because the loba admitted it. Now listen carefully. So meaning it hadn't been confirmed, it hadn't been validated yet. Maybe it was a forgery. The loba admitted though on his own that it was a good loan. He says, but I paid it back. Okay, you paid it back. So, so Rebbe says you you can you validate it, validate, check the witnesses, take it to court, validate it, and then what? The Gemara doesn't say what. We're assuming you can collect it again. Why can he collect it again? He could say I paid it. Yeah, okay, but well, he has. He, Forget the star. No, no. Okay, okay. He has. There is a star. The star is yeah, definitely valid. But the but the, the lova, it's valid. It's yeah, valid. But, but the lova claims yeah. that he paid it back. Right. So what do you do? That's the question. So Rebbe says you you validate it, and then what? We didn't say yet. Shemuel says no, Split it. You split it down the middle. They're both holding on to it. We can't prove one way or another. So there's no motzi mechavei olvarai. There's a there's a star here, but you know, no pardon. There's what? They, they both oh. saying that they lost it. No, but split it like that. Oh yeah, definitely. Someone's gonna lose. Yeah, but what's what's your option? What do you do? Okay, Motsu Mechavel of Araya, that's right. But it, 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 okay, for, forget the forget it. What about the Talus? Why don't you say Motsu of Araya? Right. No, yeah. because there, there no, are no pre-existing. There's no proof. There's no proof here either. No, the low, a th there was a low, but he said I paid it. Okay, okay. Was so there was a loan, but I paid it back. There was always a I admit that the, I admit that there was a loan. I admit that there was a loan, but I paid it. So what? So go prove that I paid it. Go prove you paid it. You don't have to prove that you paid it. Sure. He's a, the fact that he's holding the star says that I paid it. Okay, so that very good. So he says, so pay it back. That doesn't negate it. That says split it. We don't know who to go with. They both have proof in their hands. The Malva has proof. The Malva has proof that he hasn't that hasn't been paid because because I'm holding on to it. The Loba has proof that he paid it because he's holding on to it. They both have the same proof, just like the star. Hmm? Uh, okay, so they're, they're both. Let's say they're both willing to swear. So what? What are they willing? They're both willing. They're both. They're both willing to swear. But number one, you don't swear to collect, right? You swear only to ponder, unless it's a special draw button that you make a shvu over here. So Reb Shmuel says you split it. You split it. Now what's going on? Now for the uh, Dian, let's say a judge picked it up. You want to say why that? Your judge will see that. Let's say another. Let's say you shouldn't get. What? In other words, let's say they didn't pick it up. Somebody else found it. You found an IOU that was written from Reuben to Shema. And what do you do with it? Who do you return it to? Who do you return it to? The Ru Reuben says I haven't been paid. Shimon says I paid you. What do you do? Leave it. Don't return it to either one. You know, can't settle it. If they're both holding on to it, right? If they're both holding on to it, then we have this machlokas between Rebbe. It's not clear what Rebbe means, but he says, establish it, you know, validate it. Shemuel says you split it because neither one has a bigger claim than the other. You're right. Motsi Mechavel Raya. They don't have any proof. They they both Motsi Mechavel They're both in the same situation. Yosi Omer, Hareu Bechaskaso. You, Hareu Bechaskaso, meaning if you find a star with a die, let's say a dying or somebody finds a star and it says Reuben owes money to Shimon, and it's a valid star, you give it back to Shimon, and Shimon can collect. We'll see why. Omar Mar, now let's analyze these different sheets. Omar Mar, what does that mean? Uh, the Rebbe says, you validate it, and then what? And then you can collect it. The Malva collect the whole thing. 
Two people have the exact same claim. They're both holding on to it. They're both holding on to the fringes, the exact same portions. You split it down the middle. So what's wrong with that? Yes, means. If the star is already validated, that Besson says, yeah, the Adam, we says we the Adam came to us and it's a good star. And we don't know who's who did it fall from. Did it fall from the Malva and the Yosem the thing or fall from the Lova? We have no more proof one or the other. You split it in Echanami. Everybody agrees that Yechlo agrees. Keep looking at the Machlokas between Rebbe and Shimon Leel, but it hasn't been validated. Rebbe saw our Mother Bishdash Akasim Sarf Lakaimo. Even though the Lova admits, even though the Lova admits that it's a good star, <coughs> you still have to validate it. If you validate it, Polik, then he agrees with the Shimon Leel that you split it. Below Makaimle, if he's not Makaim, we can't prove that it's a valid star. So the fact that he admitted it doesn't mean anything. Below Makaim, low poly. My time, then you my time chasmu. It's simply like a shard. It doesn't mean anything. Manka Mashapalisha. I you say, what do you mean? But the Lova admitted that it's good. Yeah, but the Lova also says it, he admitted that it was a good star, but he also said, if you believe him that it's a good star, you believe him that it was paid. He says, I admit that it was a good star and I paid it off. Manka Mashapalishara, uh, who makes the star? Into a star, into a valid ayu lova. How come the prayer? He also says it was paid off. So the Tanakama Rebbe says, listen, first you have to validate it. And if you validate it, and a chanami, then you split it. But if you don't validate it, then you don't, the Malva can't collect anything. Why? Because it's only valid because of the word of the lova. But the lova says, I paid it. If you believe my this, believe my that. Shimuel says, no. So uh, once the lova admits that it's a valid star, so now it's a valid star. Even though you don't, you can't validate the Adam. The Adam are gone. They died. Whatever they they left. They left town. You still split it either way. So they're both saying effectively, though the machlok is only if you have to validate it or not. But they both say back to just like our Mishnah, two people holding on to a star. They now you you split it. Now the Mishnah went on. The Rabbis went enough. A time let's say Lamas. If it fell into a judge's hands, he should never give it out because he doesn't know who to return it. What is he going to do? If two people are holding on to it, so they have the same claim as on our mission. Two people are holding on to a star. We don't know who's the off. They both willing to swear that they that uh, that they that you know their side. The Malva says I haven't been paid. The Lova says he has been paid. So so what do you, you split it? But if nobody's holding on to it, you picked it up in the street. You don't know who it belongs to. Who did it fall from? So Gemara says my shot died. But some fell into a die, and anybody picked it up. I'm Rabbi Nachman Yochumer. The Acher somebody else. Shemot the star. Shenafli a die. If somebody finds a star which has already been confirmed, actually been ratified, the cost of lay, kagon, the cost of lay, it's got a confirmation from the Besna. Besna has ratified it that it's a good star. They've checked that it says, you know, we sign on the bottom that we had the Adam come and it's a valid star. Okay, if they find something, don't, don't, uh, don't, uh, leave, you know, don't depart, don't part with that star forever. Uh, why? Because who are you going to give it to? You can give it to the Malva, maybe the Lova already paid it. You give it to the Lova, maybe he never paid it. So what do you do? You leave it until somebody brings proof for Achi of LEO, let's say Lamas. The Lovey boy, low cost of a certainly if there's no ratification on the shot, they didn't confirm, Bess didn't confirm it, the equal member cost of the Lova. It's possibly, you know, many times uh, a lender, let's say you're in the mafia and you like to lend out money, right? So uh, they usually don't use the star anyway. But you know, sometimes you're a regular loan, your household finance, and you want to you want to lend out. So you have a lot of uh, loan documents that you was written out, ready to fill in the names and the dates and the amounts and all that, right? Maybe he wrote it to lend out. A uh, guy calls me up. Can you lend me two hundred dollars? Yeah, yeah. Come on over. I'll write out an IOU. Writes it out, and then it turns out the guy didn't borrow the money at the end. So maybe he wrote it out to lend the money, and he never lent it out. So if there's no confirmation in Besden that the Adam saw this loan take place. Then uh, it, certainly it's no good. Certainly you shouldn't. The, the person who found it shouldn't return it to either party. Ella filakos of Even if there's a ratification written on the star, the mekuyim that it's been confirmed that the loan took place, still yachzer the cheshim liparam because your maybe was paid off. Maybe it was. Maybe who who dropped it? The lova. Remember, after he pays it off, he pays off the loan. The malva gives him back the IOU, and he dropped it walking out. He dropped it. So we're worried about from Rabbi Yosi Omer Harei Bechaskas. Rabbi Yosi says no. If you find a document like that, again, not where two people, we're not talking about the first case where they're both holding on to it, where you find a document and it's been ratified, court, it's a good document. Ruben did lend the money to Shimon. It's valid, right? He says you can return it to the Malva. Why? 
Why? Because the standard thing is, is that when you pay off the loan, you get that, you tear it up. Rashi says, La alter, Zorbe Karo. Doesn't mean Irving, it means La alter right away. Shtar Parua, La alter, Zorbe Lakara. As soon as you, you, you're very careful, the first thing you do is you rip it up. Okay, so that's her Yossi Shita. Now the Gemara, so we have Machlokas here <laughs> between the Tanakama, who says, if you find the Shtar, even if it's ratified and all that, don't return to anybody. Just as you can return it to the Malva, because it certainly has not been paid off, because otherwise the Lova would have ripped it up. But Lo Chai Shabbos Lebron is that Yosef is not worried about hey, that it might have been paid off. But Tanya will learn Matzah Shtar Ksuba B'Shuk. You find the Shuba. Now, in the case of Ksuba, who is the Malva and the Lova? The woman is the Malva, effectively, right? She's like, she is going to be paid. She's holding on to her Ksuba, and <laughs> she'll be paid the Ksuba once her husband dies or divorces her. So, but Tanya Matzah Shtar Ksuba, let's say you find the Ksuba in the Shuk, who do you return it to? You return it to the husband, right? To return it to the husband, who effectively is like the, the, the lova, saying, "Okay, I paid her off. I get to keep the ksuba now because I paid you off." Or you return it to, to the wife. But then must have shook this mancha bal moda. If the husband's moda, I haven't paid her yet. It's her ksuba, of course. Then you give it back. Yachsol ishi, give it to her. He's moda. He's moda. You know, she's uh, give. I haven't paid her. Ain't about moda. That's usually the fight where the fight breaks out. The whole issue comes up that he says. <laughs> I paid it already. The husband's not motivated. Well, so let's yeah, so say you don't return it to either one, right? You don't return it to either one because you don't know how to return it to. That's like the case where you found the Malva, you found the IOU. If she's still married to him, you can give it back to her, right? Because probably she hasn't been paid yet. It's not a scholarship, but if she's been widowed or divorced, lo so what do you see? Rabbi Yossi also says you're worried about maybe it was paid off. You said before, if you find an document, it certainly would have been ripped up, right? Here he says, here he says, you don't return to him. You are worried about maybe it was paid off. So the Gemara says, Eipach. Now we're going to turn around the shitas and the, and the price that we said. Nuffly, a dime, if it fell into a dime, meaning into somebody else's hands, and it's validated. Lo Yossi, Lo Masiv Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi says you're worried about maybe it's paid off. Achom Rebbe Chaskas. I'm saying, no, you can collect with it because otherwise it would have been ripped up. So you so you've answered Rabbi Yossi. The Rabbi Yossi is worried about payment, but the Rabbanan are not. But the Kasha before, you had Kasha on the Rabbanan. Before the Rabbanan were the one who said, what? Chashinan Liparon. And now you're saying the Chum say, no, you can assume that it hasn't been paid off yet because they're, uh, you know, they, that he hasn't been paid off yet. And uh, you listen to the husband. So the answer is no. The, the truth is that this last case is all, is you answered Rabbanan, just this last case of Shtar is all Rabbi Yossi. In other words, it's not there's a sheet of Rabbana. And the Rabbana are worried about Chayshin Leperon. And Rabbi Yossi, who said before, so what's that? Uh, uh, what are you going to do that? Shtar Ksuba Kulu Rabbi Yossi. Bechsuri Mechsra is missing from the Brisa, so this last Brisa, so the Shtar Ksuba. Bechdan, ain't about Moda, right? Uh, I'm sorry, I skipped it. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I didn't skip it. I just didn't say it right. Eipach, we turn it around. The Nuffli are dying loyal to Lomas, the Rebbe Joseph says you're worried about paying the Chomse, Harea Bechaskoso, meaning you can give it back to the Malva in the case before where you find the document, you can assume it wasn't paid. So what are the Rabbanan do? Yeah, because Rabbanan yeah, say in this price, uh, they say what? You don't give it back to the, to the, uh, to the uh, wife, meaning that, you know, like, as, if she, as if she hasn't been paid off. He says, what do you do with Rabbanan over here? Rabbanan, how can you say that the Rabbanan say over here also, the Rabbanan say, why you should return it to the lender, in this case would be the woman. The answer is, there is no Rabbanan in this in last price. In the second price, that's if she's been with or divorced. If she's still married, then you give it back to Absalisha. Give her a Yossi. Shab Yossi, Omar, 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 Right, you, you give it back to the woman because obviously he hasn't been. She, the odds are she hasn't been paid yet. Except if she's still married to him. So now we're saying that yes, Rabbi Yossi is concerned about payment, right? Is is concerned about you don't return it. And the Rabbanim say you're not worried about payment. That's the Rabbanim before. You don't have to switch them around. Rabbi Yossi, meaning the Rabbanon are the ones who are worried about payment, and therefore you don't return it at all. Rabbi Yossi says no, you give it back to the Malva or to the Isha. Rabbi Yossi ran to Rabbanan Kamer. Rabbi Yossi is just explaining according to Rabbanan in the second b'risa. Even if she's been with her to divorce, Rabbi Yossi goes with his sheet that he said before, 
So you find an IOU, you give it back to the Malva. You find the Ksuba, give it back to the woman. I say, even if she's widowed or divorced, you're not worried that's been, that she's been paid off. You're not worried about that. You're not, you're not concerned about that. Otherwise, it would have been ripped up. But according to you, who you say what? That you're worried about payment. Only me, at least be motivated to me, but Odetachas Bala, if she's still married to him, then you can give back to the problem because she wouldn't have been paid. Why would he have paid her off if she's still married to him? The Rabbanan said, it's possible that he gave her a CD. It's possible that, you know, he gave her like a um, a guarantee. Even though we're married now, I'll tell you what, if something happens to me, rather than you have to fight with the uh, Yorshim, I'll put away a CD for you. And it's sorry, he gave her a bundle, put it on the side. So it is possible that he paid off there for the Rabbanan to say, you always worried about payment. That's And therefore, you never give it back to the woman. That's the Rabbanan Shita, because we're, we're saying now, that what don't turn around the mission. Did, did right. the woman have to, so in other words, you're allowed to pay a suba, but you're not allowed to pay a suba in advance. Before, while you're still living. Yeah. And, you know, here's an, here's an I'm, I'm just giving it to you. Yeah. 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 It's, it's not really taking it. away. He put it away for her. Like she he, has to agree he put, Yeah. Yeah. She put off good. Why would so she agree? She we're not talking. We're talking apples and oranges. No. No. She's saying. She's saying she, I haven't been she's paid. The she's yeah. She's the mom. She's saying I haven't been paid. Right. And he's he saying said, I paid you. Now he's saying I paid you. He, I paid you. Right. He's saying I paid you. Now, um, the Rabbanans say you're always worried about Paran. You're always worried about paying it back. Rabbanus says, you never have to worry about Paran. If the document's here, obviously, obviously she hasn't been uh, no, no, no. If the document is here, obviously she hasn't been paid yet. Because if she would have been paid, the mal the, the husband would have torn it up. That's Rabbiosi Shita. So Rabbiosi says to Rabbanan. Who say no? You're worried about payment. I understand you that you're worried about payment. You disagree with me in a case where they're already divorced, because you say it would have been ripped up, and therefore you weren't. And I say no. Uh, I, I mean, I say that she hasn't been paid yet, because otherwise she would have. She would have been. Um, she would have been. Um, you would have ripped it up, and therefore I say give it back to the woman. You say no. You're always worried about payment, but at least be motive to me where they're still married, that she hasn't been paid yet because they're still married. That at least be motive to me and the Rabbanon say no. Even in that case, we're worried that he paid her off and he gave her he gave it to us, and that's why the Rabbanon say you don't return it to her. But I, I he would have been torn up, so he didn't tear it up. In other words, the Rabbanon worried worried about payment. So that's another way to look, Rabbi. And, but then you don't have to you don't have to turn around the mission. In other words, you don't have to like Rabbi Yossi is the one who's not worried. He's not worried that payment would have been made because he says it would have been ripped up otherwise. And the Rabbanon always worried about payment. Ravina Mela Ola We are going to switch around the first one. And we're going to say the Rabbanon are worried about payment. Rabbi Yossi is not, the Rabbanon are not worried about payment. The Rabbanon say what? That uh, don't return it to either one because maybe it's been paid off. And Rabbi Yossi says that what? Rabbi Yossi says that, um, um, I'm, I'm sorry, that yeah, the Rabbanon say the other way around. Rabbi Yossi says that you're worried about payment, and the Rabbanon say, you give it back to the woman. Why? But time of Rabban, in other words, the word Rabban is saying you always you give it back to the Malva because it, you you give it back to the Malva. You, you, you if, if you find it on document, it would have been ripped up. The Lova would have been would have ripped it up if he would have paid it off already. And therefore, since you have it, it's intact. You give it back to the Malva. So why by the woman don't you say that? Why by the woman? The time of Rabban and Hacha. The reason why the Rabban say over here in this case what what by the case of the woman. That the Rabbanan say there you don't give it back. But time the you're worried that she lost the ksuba. You gave her another ksuba. Doesn't it happen that people lose their ksuba? You ask a lot of people. You ask uh, older people like us, where's the ksuba? Who knows where? The, does the wife know where the ksuba? She lost the ksuba. He gave her another one. <laughs> so he gave it. You're worried about maybe it's another ksuba. Therefore, you don't return it to her. That's his reason. It's a different reason of it. So Rabbanan say. Normally, you give it back to the Malva because if it hasn't been ripped up. But here, there's a concern that maybe there's a, another suba. Right? Rashi says uh, up above, not because you're worried been paid off. You do tear it up. The reason why the runner is that this one fell. This she lost the suba. Don't give it back to her because she already has another one. He's not saying I paid her off. He's saying there's another one over there. Don't give it back to her for that reason. So different ways to understand this. 
But the Pashim Shad is that Rabbi Yossi is not worried about two wrong, and he says he give it back. And the Rabbanon say yes, Rabbi Yossi, the Sheikh Sibba, Rabbi Yossi is not worried about Shuba. That's a far out case. Worried that he gave her another Ksuba. He wouldn't give her another Ksuba. He probably would have told her, go look for your Ksuba that you lost. So that's how you understand the mission, this price. Amr Abulazar. Now, what do we say? We said that when two people are holding on to the Shtar, they split it down the middle, right? Shemilikum, right? Uh, machlokas, this Machlokas Rashi learns that it's speaking on the Machlokas between Shimming and Leel and Rebbe. Yom Shimming and Leel, Damash, Machlok and Beshava. In other words, not that the machlok is between Rebbe and Rishim Galil, but that rather this the, the division of the star. What do we say? The Rebbe and Rishim Galil is simply arguing by motor Shashikosu with the Lobus motor that it's an IOU. Do you have to confirm it or not? So Rebbe says, if you confirm it, then you split it. If you don't, uh, you're not. Rishim Galil says you split it anyway. You don't have to if, with the Lobus motor. You split it. But again, if they're both holding on to the star. No one has more proof than the other. All you want. Nobody has more proof. That's like two people holding on to the talus. Neither one has more proof than the other. There's no w- w- uh, witnesses, etc. Um, then you split it. Now, says the Gemara. Now, the, in this case, we're talking about the holding on to the Shtar. This division of the Shtar, you split it into two. Amr of Lezer Machlokas, this Machlokas we're talking about, again, not the Machlokas between the rabbis, but the Machlokas of the division. They're both holding equally on to the main, to both parts of the star. You know, every star has what we call a tofus, a boilerplate, where it's all written out. And then you have the torah, which is the operative parts, the names, the city, the date, the amount of money, those parts. So he says they're both holding on to both to both those things. In the tofus, they're, they're both holding on to the star. They both have in their hands part tofus and part torah. They both have that. But if one's holding on to the boilerplate and one's holding on to the operative parts, the names, the set, and the dates, so he takes the tofus and he takes the tofus. Now, what does that mean? What do you mean he's taking the ta- They're splitting up the paper over here? What are we talking about? Not clear yet. We'll see. You always split it. You split it. You don't look at the, who's holding on to these words or don't. That one, you just split it down the middle. But what does that mean before? He says, you hold on to the tofus and he gets the tofus. What does that mean? So the Gemara just says, but okay. So the Machlokas is, does one get the tofus, one get the tofus, or do they both split everything? I have a tiny zenot on Makam Shere Begas. We learn another place, say each, we the Bryce say each one takes until, or another Bryce says, each one takes until his hand goes. Nashma, not halfway down. That's speaking about where the tofus is in the middle. Because the truth is, they fill in at the top of the page, they fill in the date. Right, and in the middle, then there's a part where they fill in the names, etc. We'll see later on that they also at the bottom there's a summary. The last line summarizes the names and the amount of money, etc. And you go by that. That's even in the tofus. But okay. But in the main point, the point is that we're speaking where the tofus is in the middle. If the tofus is in the middle and they're each holding on to both, so of course you split it down the middle. So let's read for the microbiology. It's closer to one. Mao same Allah He might say, Well, it's closer to me. I get the Torah and you get the Tophus, which is worth less, obviously. Although we don't understand yet, what does that mean? <laughs> what you, it's a piece of paper. What's going on over here? What do you mean I get the Tophus? Why do you split it this way? Down the middle, you can split it that way. Don't split it lengthwise, split it crosswise, and we'll split it. Okay, let's understand that. So one says if they're both holding on to the document. You split it and that's it. You split it. You split the value, whatever the document is worth. You split it down the middle. Okay, but Reb Lezer says if one guy's holding on to the boilerplate, one's holding on to the operative parts of Torah, each guy gets that. Well, I'm like, what does he need the paper for? Does he need it as a cover for his jar? You know, for his bottle? What do what you? What are you? What are you going to do with it? You talking about who's going to get the piece of paper over here? What do you? What are you dealing with? I'm gonna lay the dummy. No, we need the value. Why? Dumb or hockey? Star of this base amount, a star that has time on it, how much is that worth? Versus a star that doesn't have the date. The main part of the tariff is the date, because that's not even repeated in the, at, the, at the end. This base man, how much is that worth? The less base man, how much is that worth? The star of this base man, a star that has man on it, you can collect from Shabbat, because you could tell when the lien started. If there's no date, they did it. That's why we put a, why do we put a date in, let's say, in Gittin? One is Shemichap Abbas in case she committed adultery, so we know when it took place and he can't play games. Another reason is so we know when the get was given, and at that point, the husband is no longer entitled to her assets, to her nechse malud. So obviously, this man is an effect. 
So if he, if he's got this man on it, his part of the star is worth more. So uh, you figure out how much is a star that has man versus a star that doesn't have man. It's worth more because you can collect the bottom with that. Either the logo of the one that doesn't have man cannot collect the bottom. So you all the bani bani So you give them the difference. In other words, the one who's all if one guy's holding on to the tarp, one guy's holding on to the tofus, what's the difference in value between a star that has a man or not? That difference goes to uh, goes to this guy. Then it's a different. Yeah, no, but the but, but, but the tofus also has at the bottom. Rashi points out at the bottom the last line in the summary, which is not the Torah, also summarizes the name and the amount of money, etc. It just doesn't have the date. Rashi points out. I take a look at the last Rashi on the page. It's a long one. It's about 10, 12 lines. Um, the Torah of Adam Tovis this Bay Mokamasman has a place. The name of the two litigants, the the lender and the uh, debtor, and the money is written even the tofus. The last line has to summarize it. Let's say they wrote hundred dollars at the top, and at the bottom they wrote down two hundred dollars. Right? You go down, you go according to the bottom one. You go according to the last of the summary. summary. But this man is not repeated at the end. You don't even need the Adam over here. The point is, though, is man, if the, he's holding on to this man. That's the key. And he's holding his man, so it's worth more. So he gets he gets more than the guy who just has the tofus. You don't split it equally. The Achlokunami. Even when you said when you split it, the one who holds it, you split it. Or if they're both holding on to both sections of it, they're both holding on to the top, you split it. Nami Darman, the dummy, we're talking about the value. Because you're not talking about splitting up the paper. Splitting up the paper, what is he going to use it for? You use it for toilet paper, we would say, you know, what do you need the paper for? No. The answer is this man is worth more. And even when we say you split it, also, we don't mean you cut the paper. Let's say they're both holding on to both, or neither is holding on to the top, whatever. It doesn't mean you cut the paper down the middle, it means the value. Let's say two people are on the talus, the, 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 our main case in the mission, two people are on the talus, so we say you split it. They both swear they don't have less than half, blah, 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 that I found it, you found it, et cetera, and you split it. What do you mean? You cut the talus down in the middle? You're going to destroy it. That's not a kasha. So you can use it for little children. You'll use a small talus for them. You could cut it down the middle and still have some use. What about if it's got gold on it? Gold embroidery, what are you going to say there? There you're going to destroy it because what's it going to be worth if you cut down? Achanami de Pagula, Achanami de you're going to ruin it. You cut down a gold embroidered document, you cut, cut it in half, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to cause this loss. Oh, Akasha, the Chazlam Rachim. Kingship, princess could use it, Benayim Rachim could use it with gold on it. In other words, it'll be cut in half and it'll still have purpose for them. I will tell you, Shacham Rachim, I'll get him. Mishnah also said two people riding on an animal, or one was riding and one was leading. The same achlokas. He went to each guy said, I found it, I found it, it's mine, it's mine. Achanami de Pagli, you're going to split the animal down the middle, off Sadur. You're also you're going to cut the animal in half, so you've lost its value. Bishlam Torah, if it's a kosher animal, chazil the basar. So you can say, okay, fine, how we split it? We'll shecht it, and we'll each take half the meat. If El but if it's a donkey, so a lot of donkeys in that, there's El right? If it was a if it was a non-kosher animal, a pig or whatever, off Sadur. What are you going to do there? If you cut it down the middle, you've lost it. El dummy. We mean for the value. Achanami dummy. In other words, in general, we say over here, we, when we talk about splitting up the document, we don't mean cutting the paper in half. We mean for its value, just like Schneim Oaks and everything else we're talking about for its value. All right, we'll pick them here tomorrow for Ami Rami Bacham. We'll pick it up here tomorrow.